certainly likely we'll see some rain and lows will be in the mid to upper 40s inland. Upper 40s to low 50s along the coast. Then on Tuesday, look for some morning showers, 30 to 40 percent chance. Those will end by midday, clearing in the afternoon. Highs will be in the low to mid 50s, both inland and at the beaches. I'm StormTrack 12 meteorologist Donnie Cox. It's time for Youth Points on the Talk Station, the show for the young and the young at heart. Giving teens and young adults a voice here on the Talk Station, where they can express their point of view. Now, across the quad, across the campus, across the generational divide, Youth Points on the Talk Station. Youth Points on the Talk Station, FM 107, AM 1240. Hopefully we're going to be joined by Hunter here in a few moments. He'll be joining us by phone. He's actively involved in a play at East Carter High School. So uh, we've got today two of our panelists here. I'm looking forward to the conversation. We have, um, well, let me just start off and give them both the opportunity. To, this way I can ch- do a sound check on you. Uh, all right, Addison, good, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Addison, and I'm a freshman at East Carter High School. I'm Sandy. I'm Erica. I'm homeschooled and a senior. And a senior, and you're also dual enrolled. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, And then hopefully if we get Hunter on, he's a a senior at East Carter High School. Uh, The number, if you'd like to join us this afternoon, welcome to call in with your observations and comments. 252 area code 247-7282. That's 247-7282. Via email at viewpoints with an S. Viewpoints radio at hotmail.com. Via Facebook at viewpoints on the talk station. As always, to thank our sponsors for the evening, of course, Floyd's 1921 Restaurant located at 4th and Bridges Street in beautiful Uptown Morehead City, and Advanced Water Systems, the people that bring you Connecticut folks that are practically reinventing water. And one thing I do want to mention about Advanced Water Systems, just to remind you, uh, they treat water gently. Uh, they remove the hardness. They make it softer, more comfortable, and, uh, well, eh, Taylor's over there smiling when I say that. Seriously, they do. They treat it politely. They get rid of all that mean, hard stuff that's in water, and therefore treating your uh, your your home, your business properly as well. And I might add, even your skin. Uh, if you want to find out more about the outstanding array of Connecticut products, don't hesitate to give them a call. They have offices conveniently located nearby in our listening audience, Old Cherry Point Road in New Bern, 635-6222. That's 635-6222. Home office and showroom, Highway 70 East between Newport and Moorhead City, 223-4444. That's 223-4444, of course, online at ConnecticutNC.com, where you can check out the, a wide array of Connecticut products, the non-electric water solution, as their water softeners are known, as well as a wide variety of reverse osmosis water purifiers, the K5 drinking water system is one of particular note, as well as air purifiers. Those local numbers again, Old Cherry Point Road in Newburn, 635-6222. And of course, their home office and showroom, Highway 70 East between Newport and Moorhead City, 223-4444. That's 223-4444, Advanced Water Systems, the people that bring you Connecticut, folks that are practically reinventing water. All right, uh, the question for the day, and I'm going to get into politics pretty early in the program. And frankly, I remember your opinions about this one, uh, Erica. But first question, before I even get into the topic of voting at the age of 16, that's a proposal. Uh, My question to you both is, have you kept up with the national news? I say national news. uh, Yeah international for all intents and purposes related to the investigation of the president uh, over the uh, you know the past two years and of course the report by the special prosecutor was released or actually given to uh, the, the attorney general the attorney general re- released a summary report uh, Sunday so I'm just wondering first question did you know much about it and secondly has there been any discussion at schools and Addison I'll start with you on that one um, I mean, I knew about it, and I knew of how he was not guilty because there wasn't enough, like, hardcore evidence and proof that he actually did anything. So I knew that much. But other than that, I didn't really look, like, deep into it. And at school, nobody has said really anything about it. Oh, okay. This segues beautifully in the upcoming conversation. All right, let me hear from you, Erica. And by the way, you, let me just remind folks, a homeschooler, but you're dual enrolled, so you're at community college a lot. 
Yes. And I know you're online for your classes and things of this nature. Well, some of them. Some, all right. So talk to me. What what has been your experience? Uh, I, I knew about what was going on, but I wouldn't say that I've followed it at all or kept okay. up with it or anything like that. And I've never heard, well, around people my age or the other college students, I've not heard any discussion on the, about that. Really? Among adults... I, I do hear discussion of it, but I wouldn't say millennials. Uh, um, what generation are we? We're digital Gen Gen Z. Gen Z. Yeah. 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 No, no interest. Not. We have better things to do. Oh. <laughs> then, because you hear about it all the time on the news, and there's a little. I could see a little bit of discussion between it, but to. to not among, not at the college, because most, like I said, I've said this before, most discussions I get in in the college was, oh, what you get for number, you know, for okay, answer so three, answer, yeah, 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 yeah. Which, it's it's school related, so oh, you know, we don't talk politics. Or you like you, that. you bring up a good point. It was raised by one of our callers in the fact that uh, not necessarily proposing that the president do a victory dance or the um, his supporters, but rather get on with the business that needs to pardon me, needs to be done. And, um, you know, one of the issues and a recent report done by the Media Research Center, which sort of reviews coverage of events and particular issues, and not all of them, just those that seem to be generating the greatest amount of interest, notes that over 38 hours of broadcast time has been dedicated to the investigation of the president. 38 hours. Uh, I said roughly a day and a half. So a uh, day and a half of full time, nonstop broadcast hours dedicated to the president, as well as thousands of pages of, um, uh, of press uh, being put forth on the on uh, about the president and the process. All of this is uh, kind of to your point a moment ago. To what end? People, I mean. You're you're saying something that you've got things to do, Addison. Would you agree? I mean, yeah, but I'm also when like watching TV and you're like you want to settle down for the night. Nobody really, at least Gen Z people, don't really put on the news. They usually like put on a Netflix show or something. Uh, I I like that. Okay. I mean, we do watch or I at least watch the news sometimes, and like my parents are or I'm eating with my parents, and like that's the show they decide to put on. But other than that, I don't really watch it for my own pleasure and joy. Uh, well, I, and then of course uh, noting here that um, uh, 533 thousand articles have been published about the uh, about Russia and and uh, President Trump and the issue of collusion and all. So now that it's over, I'm curious. Do you hope? that something else will be covered. Addison. Um, I mean, I'm not sure. How about March Madness, right? Isn't that basketball? Yeah. Okay, I don't really watch basketball, oh, so I, I don't really know. <laughs> oh, what's going on in our schools? Okay, Erica, besides March Madness, what else are you looking <laughs> forward to watching? Um, uh, I'm, I'm just hoping that the, they start covering, I guess, I can't think of any at the moment, but a little more pressing topics. Wow. Okay. This, this segues beautifully in the upcoming conversation. There is a proposal that would have, Addison, you're, you're in the midst of getting your driver's ed, driver's, mm -hmm. driver's license. Yeah. So you're, you're headed towards 16. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that you may also be given the opportunity if there is a uh, growth within Washington, D.C.? I say growth, not as, a, as if it were a virus, um, <laughs> to um, promote voting for 16 year olds. I want to get your opinions on that right after this break. We have uh, Erica and Addison here in the studio this afternoon. Your observations as well. What do you think? Should we accommodate that interest of allowing 16 year olds to vote? Just curious. Stay with us here on Youth Points on the talk station. That number, if you'd like to join us, curious about your observation about that, 247-7282. That's 252 code. 247-7282. Should high schoolers 16 and older, should they be given the opportunity to vote? I mean, we're handing them a national debt, $22 trillion. Maybe they have some thoughts on that. Stay with us here on Youth Points. Youth Points. 
Hello. Hey, you old law, is that you, boy? Lawyer Daggett, what's up? Heck, fire, boy. I seen there's 25 people running against you for Congress. Ain't nobody ever heard of them. I do recall a couple of them were up for dog catcher one time. <laughs> there's one of them now. Lawyer Daggett, I fought in Iraq as a combat Marine to give every American that opportunity. Well, you sure done that, brother. There is a battle going on in D.C. every day. I'm willing to fight for you. All you have to do is send me up there. Congressman Phil Law, that's got a nice ring to it. I'm Phil Law, and I approve this message because America's worth fighting for. Paid for by Law for Congress. If you're struggling with your weight, maybe it's time you looked at alternatives that not only help lose the pounds, but also help you gain back your way of life. From playing on the floor with your children or other activities, challenges of decreased mobility, being overweight, puts restrictions on your life. Achieve your goals of an active lifestyle with weight loss surgery. Get the facts about lap band, gastric sleeve, or bypass surgery at a free seminar presented by Carteret Healthcare's Weight Loss Surgery Center. Our board-certified physicians will discuss the different options of weight loss surgery, and you'll hear the success stories of your friends and neighbors who are more active thanks to weight loss surgery. Please call 222-5919 to sign up for the next session at the Civic Center in Moorhead City. It's not just about losing the pounds. It's about regaining your way of life. Call 222-5919 to achieve your goals with weight loss surgery at Carteret Healthcare. Hey, my friend's retail store was the victim of IoT password theft. Yep. Cyber criminals are taking over security cameras, payment systems, and other IoT devices by exploiting vulnerabilities. What if they target us and our dispersed network? We're secured with Barracuda. We have advanced firewalls for our sites, enhanced security for our cloud infrastructure, and total email protection. Such a relief. Protect your business at Barracuda.com. Barracuda, your journey secured. Voting at the age of 16, curious what uh, our panel of uh, youths have to say about that here on Youth Points. I'm curious about your observations as well. Do you uh, support this? And might this not be a good opportunity to get uh, the, the youths more involved in politics and particularly, well, big issues, political issues. I'll find out here in a moment. The number, if you have an observation on this, I'd be interested in hearing it. 247-7282. That's 247-7282. You know, we're decrying the absence of civic education in schools. What better opportunity than this giving uh, high schoolers the opportunity to vote to promote civic education and civic participation? And in light of the fact that, well, uh, the number of voters continue to decline, maybe this is another opportunity to engage more voters. So a lot of questions here. First, out of the gate, to you on this, Erica, should 16-year-olds be allowed to vote? No. What, I'm sorry, one more time. No. Why? I just, I, I know when I'm 17 and I still Ooh. think I should vote. Um, old, old, but keep and, going. But... This, and when you were saying get them more involved in politics, uh-huh. that is, this. I think there's better ways to go about that. Um, that is, I see that as the equivalent of saying, why don't we have our high schoolers learn more by letting them build our bridges? Let's let them build our roads, our houses. That's worse than that. What's wrong with that? Just because <laughs> you, know, you don't know do, what you're do doing. Do you really want your bridge to be built <laughs> by a bunch of 16-year-olds? Ah, uh, good, <laughs> good, good question. I'm just saying. <laughs> good argument. All right, Addison, uh, soon to be 15, working on her driver's uh, license. And um, what about that? What, would you would you like to have the opportunity to vote at the age of 16? I would say no. because Why not? Because, like, I feel like there's a lot of uneducated 16-year-olds out there and, like, 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds. Addison? Yeah. There are a lot of uneducated 15, 20, oh, I'm sorry, 50 and 80-year-olds out there, too, and 30-year-olds. So I, but I'm sorry. But there's less of them. <laughs> yeah. In line to the fact that uh, voters are uh, disinclined to go to the polls, and we'll talk about that in a moment. All right, I, I just wanted to uh, counter <laughs> yeah. that argument. But, like, I feel like a lot of kids nowadays would do it for, like, as a joke. Like, if, let's say, like, this one politician is just absurd and nobody believes and, like, he's actually good for the country, I feel like... A, and, oh, like, the teens would back him up. 
And the teens would back him up just because it'd be funny to vote for him. And I just think a lot of kids wouldn't take it seriously. You saw the Tide Pod challenge, okay? Yeah, like all the dumb <laughs> challenges coming out now, I don't think they're really that responsible uh, to handle. I'm, 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 Who I'm, I, I'm trying to disagree with you, and you all are not making it easy. Okay. You know, one of the concerns, though, and one of the concerns, and this is particularly for the Democrats, and, and okay, it's beat up on Democrat Day, but, but at the same time, <laughs> hold on. I will venture to say the Greens, the, conser- the, the even some conservatives out there would be of the same mind. They want to go to high schools and to college campuses. What's the idea to, to promote themselves but, Isn't that because of these college loans and college debt and stuff like that? Boy, you bring up another one. Keep going. That, that's that, I know that's what my my parents have been talking about. That's what I've heard um, is because college. And then I'm looking into it more because I'm going to college next year. <laughs> but uh, it's ridiculous how much college costs. Um, and the loans, too. It's it's so easy to get a loan, uh-huh. and it's unforgiven. Uh-huh. You can't get out of it. Right. And so that... I, I want to thank you for listening to me, too, by the way, <laughs> after all these years. I appreciate that. Uh, no, Erica, that, I think that's a good point. That, that, and that's one of the issues that have been, is being taken to the high school campuses and also the college campuses, the issue of debt. I want to get to that in a few moments as well. But also to help, I think, maybe even get you to glom on, love that description, to sort of jump on the bandwagon, possibly convince um, other of your friends who are able to vote, also your parents and family members to vote. I think there's an opportunity to influence the family vote as well. But I go back to the issue of 16-year-olds and voting, and I, I, I bring up the topic of civic education. Let's talk to you on this one, uh, Addison. Have you had a conversation in school about, and by the way, this is not uh, meant to criticize uh, your high school your teachers, or anything like this. This is all part of the grander curriculum, okay? I got it. So my question is, do you get much in the way of communications in the schools about everything from uh, how our country is uh, developed, and not developed, how it is uh, set up politically, the Senate, the House, uh, the administrative, the executive, they, uh, and, and judicial? Do, they, do you get much uh, explanation, and if so, how much? Um, I remember in eighth grade when, like, the curriculum was based on just American history. You uh-huh. learn about that. And I also know in high school there is an American history class, and I'm pretty sure that's probably going to How much, that. a question for you, how much of the information you that you were given in the eighth grade do you still remember today? I remember most of the Bill of Rights. Okay, good for you. Because we had to memorize each and every one of them. All right. Um, so you know what the First Amendment is? The First Amendment is the right to, like, free speech, or wait. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, it was, like, the right to free speech, right, to petition and religion and You've got thoughts. It. Um, and, then, and by the way, a lot of people forget the term petition. <laughs> they do. They, 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 they just think of it first as just a matter of free it. speech. Yeah. I just remember it because it was but, on a test good. I had today. <laughs> good. Oh, wait, on the test you had today? Well, and today we were learning about, like, the Middle Ages. Uh-huh. So it was in that because okay. it was something I don't remember. All right. And then I also remember we talked about the branches a lot, and I sort of remember some of them. Okay. But I so, also don't fully remember. So going back to you, with that background, you don't think that basically being able to vote at 16 would be a wise decision? Probably not, because I feel like there's also some people out there who, like, they just learn this information just to learn it and pass the test, and then afterwards they just forget all about it. All right. To you on this one, because we've talked about this in the past, uh, Erica, and that is, of course, the fact that uh, there are others who have promoted high schoolers voting. This is an age-old issue. I'm looking to you now in relationship to the topic you brought up a few moments ago, debt. Not only your debt for college, but a debt that I'm wondering if it even registers. And I'll be, I'm just going to be brutal on that. Does it even register $22 trillion in national debt? Does that register with you? Yes. I remember when it I... Does? W- it does? I, I know. I want you to know that there are a lot of people out there of my age or younger, I'm old, uh, who <clears throat> doesn't register. I'm impressed. Go ahead. 
I, I remember first learning about, when did I learn about that? It was sometime in probably freshman or sophomore year, but it was unsettling. Uh, that's the best way I can describe. Of course, I think back then it was it was lower than that twenty one. That's oh a my new goodness, number. yeah. I mean, no, that's, it, that's a new number. I feel 15, like that was that doubled. 15, what was it when I? I think it was it, thirteen trillion when it, I looked at it. It, it. Going back to, and I'm going to say that um, uh, under I, I've got to go back, but but I know uh, George when you, H you W. Can, um, George W. Bush. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember when I looked at it. It was I, I forgot where it was, but you could see it was it was live. Uh -huh. And you just you saw. Just, oh, you've got. The, you just saw the numbers flying. Yeah, the national debt clock. It's called the national debt clock, and you can Google it. All right, <clears throat> looking at this in relationship to the campaigns, we talked earlier about the opening of the. Oh, pardon me, the disclosure on the Mueller Mueller um, report, and the fact, of course, that there's talk about giving 16-year-olds the opportunity to vote. Is there anything that teenagers now? are concerned with i bring up the topic of national debt you brought up the topic a moment ago as well um erica college debt things of this nature is there uh, with all the <clears throat> knowledge and information readily at hand in the form of this little device that i'm holding being uh, the cell phone is there a lot of you know do, do teenagers go looking for this information just out of curiosity addison I mean, I do every now and then because, like, <clears throat> I'll see something that, like, I don't fully understand. So then I just go look it up because I want to know what it means when people keep talking about it. Like, national debt. Like, it wasn't right. until a few months ago that I didn't really know what that was until I looked it up and read stuff about it and, like, what it actually truly was. Does it? So, but do they do? Here's the quick question for you, Addison. Is it able? It, is there information out there that makes it, and I'll use the word, relevant to Addison and to you, Erica. In other words, it's one thing to look at the numbers and to see these highfalutin observations, as my description of them, um, esoteric comments. Oh, it's going to em enhance their em or result in higher um, inflation. Do you even know what, and, and, and not to be critical, do you even know what inflation is? Yes. yes. Okay. But do you even worry about inflation? You've, you've, uh, 15 years, 17 years, uh, each of you independently. Um, I, you know, you have this term inflation. Um, we've had, the, of course, the Great Recession. Here's a question, Addison. Did the Great Recession really mean anything to you? Not really. <laughs> okay. L l honest? Yeah. Uh, to you, Erica. I can't really say. Okay. Did. All right. 2009 to 2015, roughly. All right. Back to this issue. You've got this information readily available, but is it understandable for a 16-year-old? Um, it depends, because, like, sometimes I have to look up, like, the easy definition of this, okay. because I can't understand all the big fancy words that they I, use. I fully agree with you, but I'm going to tell you, you're not alone, and it's not because you're 16. Erica? Um, I... Now, are you asking in terms of like using using this this uh, using your computer, using all the ready access? You know, it it's really paradoxical. Just just use this. Uh, yes, I, I I know I do whenever I I'm questioning something. It could just be s something minor or why is this? So why is that? How do you do this kind of thing? Um, and I would like to say that a lot of people use it, but it's a yes or no yes and no answer on that. Because I find myself, and this was also before, um, I carry around a, a laptop with me now, and I have a cell phone now, so. Wow. Yeah. 21st century. <laughs> Good job. Mm. But I know before <laughs> I did that, um, I would be around other people my age, and they're sitting there going back and forth on some, not really back and forth on something, but they're just kind of wanting them to themselves. I wonder what this is, or I can't do this because I don't know how to do this. Say, hey, you have a cell phone. You could literally just Google it, YouTube it, something right, like that. Right. So it, just, just, it, it only takes a couple minutes. But yet people limit themselves that, oh, I can't do this because I don't know how. Right. This is like, what do you mean you don't know how? <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 going back to this issue and, 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 and the paradox that I'm talking about is theoretically Addison, and you too, Erica, but Addison for sure, the most connected and the argument is most informed 
And we're even hearing terms, the most knowledgeable generation of all time. Would you agree with that, Addison? I mean, yes and no. Okay. Because, like, it kind of depends on how you're taught and, like, the person you are. Because, like, like I said, some people would just learn the stuff to learn it. And then once it's over and they get the A or the B or whatever, right. they just discard the information. But if you're, like, somebody who uh, retains the, or keeps the information well, and then retains it and then... But, it, but it, you know... It's full of information, but the question is, is it relevant information? Does it, does it influence your life? Does it influence your expectations? And I, I argue that it really doesn't. It's there. It's there the yeah. data is there, but does it indicate to you what you're going to experience or what you might experience at the age of 25 or 30? The topic, of course, being an example on that one, Erica, the topic of uh, student loan. A lot of people get that money. They're happy with that money. They don't give it any clue. They were, pardon me. They don't have any clue of what they're going to face five years when that bill comes due. So, Addison. Yeah, like so. I feel like school should teach this more and like have a class that teaches you like about taxes and like what student loans and debts actually are and like how you should deal with it as it comes and. <laughs> I think they, it should be required. Like, I think I, I remember hearing about a because class I know there's like that. a business and finances class, but that doesn't really teach you like how to do your taxes or like how to get your tax return. Well, or whatever. what you're really doing with your taxes? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It was because I'm homeschooled, so um, yeah. I know one of the things I did in I think it was like my sophomore final project or whatever uh-huh. you want to call it. Um, but it was uh, picture yourself at 25. Uh huh. Where are you and how'd you get there? like financially so um where are you at i think that really helped me because i saw just how much taxes you know like i know income tax i was really upset about income tax because i realized it's it's ridiculously high oh. and it's not even supposed that was just a temporary thing why are we still paying it <laughs> you know your history on that one all right <laughs> The, the thing that I think is really uh, a key element here, and we'll go to the break right after this observation, and feel free if you want just to make a re- final remark about this with Addison and Erica here in the studio this afternoon, and that is I'm wondering, quite frankly, if you know the, the concept of just being a kid, whatever that description is, just being a teenager isn't consuming a good portion of of your time that you just want to be a 15 year old not not have to worry about things like um national debt i mean how much of that is influencing this conversation as well to you first addison i mean uh yeah addison (laughs) i'm about to say erica but to you first um i mean it's a, it's kind of influencing me because now I feel like I want to read up on it and learn more about it so like I can be better prepared and then like if somebody asks me what the heck it is I can explain. I've it ruined you them. for life. Okay, maybe Erica. that's what our problem is. What? Why why teenagers are rebellious? Because we just want to be teenagers, but yet all this heavy all these heavy topics are pushed onto us. <laughs> I, 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 I I'm thinking the same thing. All right, we'll take a quick break on that. We've got more to come. I'm curious about the issue in relationship to driving, as a matter of fact. Um, Erica, you're 17. Yes. And you have a a a permit. permit. Okay. And um, Addison, of course, is getting ready for hers. I'm just curious how interested you are in driving, for example. More to come here on Youth Points on the talk station. This talk station update. The issue of partisan politics and the creation of electoral districts is back before the Supreme Court. 
The court will hear arguments Tuesday in cases from Maryland and North Carolina that elected officials acted for maximum partisan advantage, known as gerrymandering. The court's decision could help shape the makeup of Congress and state legislatures over the next 10 years. A Southern California company is voluntarily recalling whole avocados over possible listeria contamination. Henry Avocado, a grower and distributor near San Diego, said Saturday that the recall covers avocados grown and packed in California and sold across North Carolina and five other states. Officials at Cape Hatteras National Seashore say a suspicious fire that burned more than an acre of the national park is under investigation. National Park Service officials say they're not sure what started the fire in Frisco Friday afternoon, but said they're seeking tips on unusual activity in the area. I'm StormTrack 12 meteorologist Donnie Cox for the talk station where I am tracking a cold front crossing the area tonight. Rain chances will be at about 70 to 80 percent. Certainly likely we'll see some rain and lows will be in the mid to upper 40s inland. Upper 40s, low 50s along the coast. Then on Tuesday, look for some morning showers, 30 to 40 percent chance. Those will end by midday clearing in the afternoon. Highs will be in the low to mid 50s both inland and at the beaches. I'm StormTrack 12 meteorologist Donnie Cox. I'm Lou Dobbs. Stocks active as the new week begins. No relief yet for the Houston Ship Channel operations and the medical community revisiting the safety of breast implants. Those stories next. Hi, this is Alexander Green, Chief Investment Strategist for the Oxford Club. Just for a moment, I'd like you to picture the perfect stock. No doubt it would have hundreds of billions in revenue, more than IBM, Facebook, and Google. It would probably be a leader in cutting-edge technology like smartphones and robotics. It would be on the verge of dozens of blockbuster announcements. But most of all, it would be ultra-cheap, trading at less than $3 a share. Now, it may seem crazy that such a stock exists, but it does. It's a cutting-edge tech company that has made deals worth hundreds of millions of dollars with Nokia, Microsoft, and Cisco, and a $29.2 billion deal with Apple. It's set to create 50,000 new jobs right here in America, and Donald Trump even calls it the eighth wonder of the world. Yet you've likely never even heard of the stock. Why? Because it trades under a secret name. To find out why the secret $3 stock can help you retire, simply go to OneStockRetirement.com. That's OneStockRetirement.com. Retail stores boosting Wall Street on this first day of the new week. Macy's shares up nearly 4%. Kohl's up 4%. Nordstrom up 3 On Wall Street at the close, stocks mix. The Dow Jones Industrials up 15 points. Coast Guard officials say it will be three to four days before operations return to normal at the busy Houston ship channel. Cleanup work still underway following the huge petrochemical fire that's burned for days. The FDA and medical doctors revisiting silicone breast implants used in the most popular forms of cosmetic surgery. Plastic surgeons and patients have reignited a debate about the safety of those implants. Please join me for Lou Dobbs tonight, 7 o'clock and 10 Eastern on the Fox Business Network. This is the Lou Dobbs Financial Report. I want to tell you about the 3rd District Special Election and Republican Jeff Moore. Jeff Moore is a husband and a father. Jeff Moore is a Christian conservative. Jeff Moore is pro-life and pro-gun rights. Jeff Moore believes in the Constitution. Jeff Moore backs Trump and the wall. Jeff Moore supports the military and our veterans. And Jeff Moore is pro-fisherman and pro-farmer. Jeff Moore is the best candidate to take our Eastern North Carolina values to Congress. On April 30th, vote Jeff Moore. I'm Jeff Moore, and I approve this message. Hey, cyber criminals stole the W 2 forms from my friend's company. Yeah, scammers impersonate CEOs in email and also launch attacks from compromised accounts. What if they target us? Uh, don't worry, we have Barracuda Total Email Protection. So we're secured? Yes, Barracuda protects businesses of all sizes with artificial intelligence that blocks spear phishing, account takeover attempts, and business email compromise. That's a relief. Protect your business at Barracuda.com. Barracuda, your journey secured. Points on the talk station FM 107 AM 12. We had an interesting conversation with our panel off air. I'm thinking that, quite frankly, I'm sympathetic. That's, I'm thinking I am sympathetic to the teenagers. Uh, here they are being prepared to vote, having to take on the challenges of the world, and they would just like to be teenagers. Um, I see nothing wrong with that. So I, I think that's one of the uh, downfalls, the hot concept of creating a 16 year old, uh, pardon me, 16 year old voting age. Okay, let's talk about driving and a question on that in relationship to Gen Z. 
It's thriving as much, and and the reason I bring this up, of course, uh, Addison has just finished her uh, classroom program. Is that right? Driver's Ed. Driver's Ed. Okay, now you get to go out there and frighten all the other <laughs> car owners. Good job. Thank you very much. We'll we'll be putting out... Uh, uh, it's not really uh, frightening if all the other drivers are at the same level you, as you are. Oh, no, wait a second. Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, no, 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 no. But back to the issue. We got plenty we will of be putting, drivers. We will be posting advisories on this. <laughs> we'll... I'll feel like I'll be that really slow driver who's really cautious because oh. I don't want to I didn't make it over the speed bump. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. My question to you is, is there a lot of interest in driving? And um, let me start with you on this one, Erica. Of course, you're there at uh, Community College because you're dual enrolled. Uh, is there a lot of thrill? And if, do people even talk about cars anymore? Not the group I hang out with. But oh. I, I do know. I know some people that, you know, they... they say oh what kind of car do you have and it's a blank model i don't really know any models okay and um that's usually as far as that conversation goes although it's more into trucks instead of sport cars aha uh-huh. so uh yeah I, i'm not uh, okay not and, really sure all right and tru- <laughs> all right addison let's hear it from you you you're now that you're in driver's ed did any of your other classmates say yeah i can hardly wait till i can drive and they're excited about it Yes. Really? Mostly because I hang out with a group of guys, and so, like, all they ever talk about is cars. And, like, my dad, all he ever does is talk about cars. So, like, I'm exposed to it, like, 24-7. And, like, I like bragging about my future car because I kind of have it. I just got to pay for it. And ooh, then, ooh, I'm impressed. Okay. <laughs> and then, like, all my friends are like, um, I'm thinking of getting this car. Or, like, what do you think? And then I'm just sitting there like, looks nice. You know, it's interesting. We've talked to other members of the crew here in years past, and many of them have expressed no interest really in cars. As long as it gets me from point A A to point point B B. efficiently and effectively, I am okay. Well, the other (laughs) aspect of it, and this is one that I'm wondering about, and this is more of a marketing question than it is really a cultural and social issue, but it probably segues into that as well. And I'm wondering about the future of driving in general. The fact that we may have autonomous automobiles. Tesla. <laughs> you, now, you're smiling about You like that. I mean, sort of, but sort of not. Because, like, also robot cars, or not robot cars. Well, that really kind of qualifies. They, I mean, they kind of, yeah. 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 Like, they may be able to drive and, like, brake and turn on turning signal and all that. But, like, when it comes down to it, if there's a drunk driver coming at that car, they, the most they can do is stop, but it can't, like, prevent. That's why the, the drunk driver should be driving in one of those cars. Yeah, yeah that's, and that's what's going to be happening. <laughs> I think like, a, not a lot of people can afford these super expensive cars, like I, Tesla. No, not a lot of people can afford a Tesla. But wait a second. That's today. That is Think true. about decades. I now. mean, well, perfect example. The cost of a cell phone. Oh, not yeah. that they're a computer a, a, yeah. a computer or a cell phone a, f- um, a computer for sure yeah computer for sure i mean i feel like in the future the price of cars will end up having to go up because then you're gonna have to pay for like all the special stuff in the car to make it drive on its own and then there's gonna be those people out there that just can't afford that so then they're still gonna be driving cars that are beater cars and like from the yeah 90s and stuff. yeah um, so it's i mean it can be more safe but there's still gonna be like those risks well, out well, here, there. the question then goes to Will your generation embrace autonomous vehicles? Mm, I probably not. <laughs> I not sure if embrace, but I know that it's being slowly implemented mm-hmm. into everything because most cars I see they have those little when you back up and it goes oh, beep, the, beep 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 mm-hmm. or you've whatever. Got, yep, you've got the that, uh, backup that's cameras. That's a form of that, and yeah. just about every car I see nowadays have that. Um, those little camera mirrors, mm-hmm, right? Stuff like that. Um, and I know uh, quite a few have those stay in the lanes and the stop, automatic stop. And it's it's surprising how many cars actually have that. So I think that it's going to be slowly implemented in, and it's just going to become the normal thing. But like, I also feel like though a lot of parents wouldn't trust their kids with like all these super high tech cars because they're going to want to put their kids in like a 
uh, a beater car. Che- yeah, a beater car, a cheaper car because they don't really trust their kid fully with driving. Considering like if it's a new driver, they're probably not going to want their kid to have a super wait expensive a, car. With wait a second. Now, not if you're behind. If you're not behind the wheel, it doesn't matter. But wait a second. True. <laughs> Your parents wouldn't trust you. I want to talk to them right outside the door. But yeah, that's <laughs> another story. Uh, I, the, good point on that part. I, I want to go to another issue altogether. And this is really more out of humor than it is seriousness. But at the same time, it does recognize the, the transition, the um, technical transition, if you will. Have either of you ever driven a car with a clutch? straight shift <laughs> i'm not have you do you know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking about because my dad used to own a few cars like that so like i know how to op or i know like how they work but i've never driven one myself but i know my dad who's trying to get into trucking he is constantly talking about changing gears yep. and all that yeah yep. so i think i kind of get how it works but i don't get how it works at the same time so <laughs> I, it, now wait a second. I, I can I can describe it to you, <laughs> and 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 a car and and a, um, a car buff would call in and say I'm absolutely ignorant. So we'll just leave it there. I'm not going to go out on that limb. <clears throat> but it is. I just wondered if you've if th- this is some of the rudimentary aspects of driving. I'm that, aware that there are things that are disappearing cars. <laughs> that are disappearing, and I'm just wondering if uh, any conversation in your class on that one, Addison, about a, a, a clutch and uh, changing of gears. I mean, it depends, because sometimes... Did, was there anything in the book, in the in the books? Yes, there was. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. It was like, I mean... One page? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it was, in, it was in like, some sections, but it was kind of just like the general... I mean, I don't know, because I know... I, uh, I don't know what I'm saying. But like, it was it's talking okay. about like driving uphill, you should shift your car into a lower gear and like... Or stuff like that. And well, like, if okay. you need more power, then go to a lower gear and then stuff like that. Did you even know what lower gear is? Yeah. I well, think. Uh, have you ever, have you ever, <laughs> think. Uh, well, wait a second. Have you ever ridden a 10 speed bicycle? Yes. Okay. Or it was like eight speed. But, okay. <laughs> well, it was a cheap 10 speed, but it only gave you eight. Okay. <laughs> Pretty bad, Addison. We're going to have to work on that. No, I, but my point is. That's that's the gear ratio that we're mm-hmm. really talking about. Okay, it's just one of those things that I wonder if maybe the transition is happening so fast. Going back to your point earlier, Erica, that you know, you don't look back in the old days. We actually had to turn around in our seat, look over our. It's advised that you should still do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, so your neck doesn't get fused in place. Oh. <laughs> Because and it I, was also because, like, it, in the book, it was like there are blind spots that, like, yeah, not, the still camera blind can't spots. see. Okay. It's but, always safe just to look. But now, when you're driving, but well, you don't know, I'm going to be interested in seeing what kind of car you're driving. If your uh, car that you're driving has all these safety features, I'd be fascinated in knowing about that, Addison. I mean, I know the car that, like, I'm supposed to get, ex- except you, I suck at saving money, so at wait, the moment wait, I can't really pay it all. Wait, 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 wait. We're going to have to you get. This goes back to the issue of uh, financial <laughs> education. By the way, th- th- I brought this up in the topic with a conversation with uh, Superintendent of Public Instruction, Mark Johnson. And uh, he talked about the fact that, to, I think you were going to mention it earlier, Erica, that schools are going to be uh, promoted to produce or, or engage in a uh, financial class on how to handle money. I think that should be. Yeah. I think but it should be. One, one of the things that came up, though, was how to balance a checkbook. Yes, it's yeah. surprising. Do you know I, what a checkbook is? Yes, I know what a checkbook is. No, you don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I know what one is, but like, I don't know all the fancy terminology that goes along with it. <gasps> like, you know what a checkbook is? I know what a checkbook is. We, we've been saying for a while that most millennials, let alone uh, Gen Z, you guys, digital generation, even know what a checkbook is. I'm surprised. Okay, much smarter than I thought they were. That's uh, Eric and Addison here in the studio this afternoon. Okay, the question coming up in a moment. In Raleigh, they're talking about actually trying to save money on the issue of buses. And so they're going to use buses for both elementary and high school students, which means that high schoolers may start class at 9 o'clock in the morning. What's your thought on that? Stay with us here on Youth Points on the talk station.
Fox News commentary with Todd Starnes. A president vindicated. That story next. And now, the worst commercial ever. I'm Jake. And I'm Jack. We're the Plow Guys. How do we keep your driveways clean? With, with commercial, commercial auto and business insurance through Progressive. They helped with a customized insurance plan that keeps our business on the road. And that's news worth shouting out loud simultaneously. Enthusiastic yelling at the same time. Yeah. Terrible. Whereas commercial auto and business insurance through Progressive is anything but. Visit ProgressiveCommercial.com to quote today. Insurance provided in service by Progressive Casualty Insurance Company. It's affiliated in third-party insurers. After 675 days, 500 witnesses, and $25 million, Robert Mueller and his team of 20 attorneys concluded there was no collusion. President Trump and his administration have been vindicated. They were victims of a left-wing mob led by Democrats and goaded on by willing accomplices in the mainstream media. Their actions have brought great shame and disgrace to the profession of journalism. There will be some, both Republican and Democrat, who say it's time to move on, but I disagree. Now is the time to expose the deep state perpetrators of the Russia hoax. They tried to stage a coup to overthrow a duly elected president, and they must be held accountable. So once and for all, we can now say without a shadow of a doubt that Donald J. Trump is the duly elected president of these great United States, not because of the Russians, but because of gun-toting, Bible-clinging deplorables. I'm Todd Starnes. That's your Fox News commentary. There's a real war against Christians in America. Now, David Horowitz's new bestseller, Dark Agenda, reveals the secret efforts in Congress, the media, even our schools and military to destroy Christianity. President Trump is fighting back, but Dark Agenda exposes the danger for him and you. Tucker Carlson says you must read this disturbing but vital book. Get David Horowitz's Dark Agenda at bookstores or check out the free offer by going to darkagenda911.com, darkagenda911.com, or call 1-800-NEWSMAX today. Hi, this is Matt Dodge from the Estate Planning Center here in Moorhead City and your local financial HQ network advisor. Join me here on Viewpoints every Friday at 6.05 right here on the talk station, FM 107, AM 1240. Youth Points on the talk station, FM 107, AM 1240. We have Addison and uh, Erica here in the studio with us this evening. Proposed 9 a.m. school bell time has some parents upset. This coming from a Nuisance Observer, News Observer article earlier this month. Wake County families are balking at a plan that keeps high school students getting up at dawn and elementary students starting school mid-morning. I have it fast backwards, backwards on that one. Let's get it right. So it would be the elementary students starting uh, school in mid-morning and the uh, high schoolers starting early in the morning. There's some talk that high schoolers actually need more sleep. My question to you, Addison, do you care if it were 9 o'clock or at uh, 7.30? I prefer it being earlier in the morning. Excuse me? I prefer it being earlier in the morning, mostly because if you get off at like 2.40 or 3 o'clock, then you have like the rest of the day to do whatever you want. Whereas like if you got went to school at like 9 o'clock, you'd have to get out around like 4.30 and 5. Uh Uh-huh. And that would be, like, less daylight out, especially, like, in the winter months where it gets dark at, like, 6. You don't have, like, an hour of daylight, and that's not a lot to do certain things. And then, like, I like going home when there's light out. So, like, because when it's, like, dark out when I get out, then it just makes me tired. And then I don't have any will or motivation to do my homework. Plus, do you actually do your homework? I do. Okay. When I went to my trip a few days ago, I had to do my homework over the trip. <laughs> no, you're kidding. I did. I brought my Chromebook on a flight because I had to do that work. <laughs> that is mean. I let me hear from you, Erica. I tell you, I'm, I hope your parents aren't as tough on her on you as they are on apparently. Well, on I did Addison. it willingly. Willingly. Addison. I did. I did not want to okay. feel that class. If I want to get into my colleges and universities, I got to do that. And you're a freshman. I'm a freshman. I'm impressed. Okay, <laughs> Erica. I don't think. Uh, like sports teams or clubs are going to be very happy about this. That's a good point. Because let's let's be honest here, elementary sports teams aren't really no, they're not as serious as high school sports teams right. and stuff. Um, that's just a fact. But but why do they? Why are they trying to cut back the cost is, of buses? Yeah, cost of busing. They need uh they they want to double up on the busing. Now, um, it's I'm kind of changing the subject here. Uh-huh. But I'm not quite understanding why schools are low on funds, um, considering each the cost of each 
student is what ten thousand dollars mm-hmm. or something uh, like it that. It depends. Depends on the region. Uh, the region, yeah. Say- but let's let's say average. Now, I I went to a private school for uh-huh. the majority of my schooling, I guess you could say, and for me for a year, and I would I say I got a pretty good education. Uh-huh. I'm here today, but I paid five thousand mm-hmm. dollars for a year. So so. These students have doubled it, but yet it seems like they have wow. a lower quality you, you, education. And I think I think we should look at the person managing this money, because Ooh, Erica, obviously, are, oh, obviously, oh. something is Erica, not right here. Erica, you're tough. I t- <laughs> I'm just we'll, we will we will bring this up. I like <laughs> I'm just the, I, saying. Okay, that's a good point. I, well, it, it's it varies from community to community, also in the cost of uh, transportation and distance and things of this nature. But I I do uh, I'm intrigued first with your comment about the need for efficiencies, but also uh, your idea real quickly: morning versus evening. Morning. Morning too. Morning. And Addison, before I wrap it up with you, do your uh, do your classmates feel the same way that you do? Um, some of them do, some don't. Okay. All right. Was well, to be expected. All right, to Addison, to Erica, thanks very much for being here this evening. Very interesting uh, program. I particularly like your thought about the concept of voting or the need not to, for that matter, uh, for 16-year-olds. Stay tuned for more here on the talk station. See dealer for details. Hello, folks. Once again, it's Mike coming to you from Trent Cadillac, Buick, GMC, and Newbert. And you know, I was thinking, I talked so much about the service department and our culture at Trent. I failed to mention one of our biggest, biggest advantages. 